Dear Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name. Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus, we praise you. Father God, we just praise you. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, Almighty Father. God, we cannot wait to see you, to be in your presence. Oh, Lord Jesus, we cannot wait to see you, to be in your presence. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father God, that you will fill us with a sense of excitement, that you will keep us on the edge of our seats as you have for so many years. We pray, Father God, that you will give us the patience of Job as we watch the things unfold around us. Father, we continue to get uh, increasing reports from your servants, the prophets, that the judgments are about to just go into overdrive. And we just praise you, Father God, for the times that we are in right now. We thank you, Father God, for the times, for the blood moons, for the for the uh, biblical blood moon tetrad that we just passed in 2015. We praise you, Father God, for the great American eclipse. We thank you, Father God, for the sign of the woman in September the 23rd. We praise you, Father God, for all of these awesome signs. We praise you, Father God, for all of the people that have continued to keep their head down, all of the prophets that have continued to seek you. We praise you for the consistent words that have been coming from not the pillow prophets, Father. Father God, but from those who have been seeking you in, in tears and travail for many, many years, we just love you, Father, for, for, for lifting these people up and keeping them on a steadfast and even keel course, continuing to prophesy exactly what they have been prophesying now for the last six, seven, eight, nine, in some cases, more years. We thank you, Father God, for awakening us, for bringing us to the place that you have brought us, for, for, for walking us through the dark alleys that, that we have been taken through by your divine providence in such a way that we were awakened whenever it was that it was your choice, your will, Father God, that we were t- to turn, to turn on to the narrow path. We thank you, Father God, for awakening us in such a way that we can be part of the bride of Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name, Father God, that you will continue to keep our, our heads down, make, it, make within us a humble and contrite heart. Help us to examine ourselves in everything that we do, everything that we think, everything that we say, everything that we feel. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that we will never get puffed up, that there will never be an, not, not even a tiny, tiny iota of pride that will ever enter any of our hearts, that we will always be humble and contrite. That, our, that, our, that we will be full of the overflowing love of our Lord Jesus Christ in everything that we that feel in, in our lives, the, the empathy and the emotion, Father God. We pray that you will overflow it in our walk, that, that, that when we look at people around us, that when we see our neighbor, when we're standing in line, that you will just overcome us with, the, with uh, our fleshy tendencies to reject these people, Father God, and to see them with the loving eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will help us, Father, to see them as those who you chose us. To, to reach out and touch during these days of darkness that are about to come upon this earth. We praise you, Father God. Help us, Father. Help us to stay focused. Help us to see that and understand that, it, that your economy of time is not our economy of time. Give us that patience that we need to have. Help us to take advantage of the days that we have of peace, or at least a, a, a relative peace, Father, uh, and help us to seek you and draw more closely. Father, for those of us who have families, those of us who have children, those of of us who have the responsibilities that draw us away, that keep us from waking up extra early in the morning to spend extra time with you on our knees. Father, we pray for that strength to overcome us. We pray for just a just your hand of righteousness to fall upon us and, and a spirit, Father God, of strength to come upon us in the early hours of the morning or the late hours of the evening or both, Father God, that we are on our knees before you and seeking you. We pray that you will fill us and fill our cups overflowing with the presence of your Holy Spirit. Fill us, Father God, with the Holy Spirit gift of love, the Holy Spirit gift of faith, the Holy Spirit gift of discerning of spirits, especially those three, Father God, and every one, every other one, Father God, we just seek you with all of our heart. We pray that you will make each of us sharp arrows in your quiver. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will draw us in closer. We want to feel your presence. Father, we just want to feel your presence. We want to know that we are on the right path. We want to be able to hear your still, small voice. For we will hear in our ear a voice behind us saying, This is the way, walk in it, whenever you turn to the left hand or whenever you turn to the right. Isaiah thirty twenty one. And we pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that we will all hear your voice, that we will be able to hear your direction, be obedient, and be excited that we're hearing from our Father, even when the news isn't the best. We pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you will touch our lives, anoint us, and draw us closer. Empower us with the enthusiasm. Empower us with the salt on our tongue. Touch us with the rhema word of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we can make changes through that, through that overflowing love in other people's lives, even before the darkness hits. In Jesus' name we pray.
and thank you, Father. Amen. If sinners be damned, let them leap to hell over our dead bodies. And if they are perish, let them perish with our arms wrapped around their knees, imploring them to stay. If hell must be filled, let it be filled with the teeth of our exertions. And let not one go unwarned or unprayed for. Praise Jesus, Charles Spurgeon. Hallelujah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Exciting times, right? Amen. We sure do have a whole lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people out there. Uh, a very anointed. Now, now, now. In all fairness, in all fairness, I have promised the Lord as best as I know how. I haven't actually verbalized the, the the promise to him. I didn't, you know, get on my knees and anoint my head with oil and make a vow to the Lord. I'm actually a little bit afraid to do that because if I dork it up, then I'm, you know, like in big trouble and all that, and I fear God. But, you know, in my heart, the Lord knows that I'm doing everything I can uh, to, you know, to, to apply the Greek word nepho, N-E-P-H-O, level-headedness. Uh, the Bible refers to it, you know, uses the word sober, First Thessalonians 5, uh, Titus 2.2. 1 Peter 3, uh, 1, uh, 13 and uh, 1 Peter 5, uh, 8 uh, it, are some of the places where it's used. Level-headed, which is like completely contrary to my personality. Or anybody who's been listening to this program for the last, like, what, what are we up to now? Like 1,020 shows or something insane like that. Praise Jesus. Uh, but, um, uh, you know... Uh, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to look back at the history of, you know, uh, the, the Lord speaking to me when, you know, that one morning when I was in, you know, I was like, try, Lord, I know, you know, I know, I, I feel it. I know you're trying to speak to me. I know, you know, what is that word, Father? What, how is it, you know, the Lord was trying to tell me how I was, you know, misbehaving or whatever. And he was like telling, and they said the word, you know, I couldn't think of the word. And he was like, impetuous. I was like, oh, ho. Oh. Okay, yeah, you're right, Lord, I am impetuous, you know, but he wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like he was, he wasn't really like mad at me, but it was like, you know, kind of letting me know that I could be like maybe just a little less impetuous, perhaps, <laughs> praise God, but um, but anyway, um, you know, I'm looking, you know, when I look back uh, at all of these years of doing these programs, you know, Tribulation Now, should we rename the program to Tribulation Maybe? <laughs> You know, when Donald Trump, when Donald Trump got elected, uh, that's what we were talking about. We were joking. Of course, we were joking. You know, we were laughing about it. And of course, you know, we, we howled out loud and with some pretty, he- you know, he- heavy hitting laughter. You know, should we should we rename the program tri- Tribulation Maybe? Remember, uh, you know, we were we were uh, 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 kidding around. Not so much so, but kind of, you know, definitely kidding around uh, in the sense about, you know, making it a 24 hour uh, Donnie and Marie Osmond program. And then and then talk about Jesus. Is having an awesome sense of humor, uh, right? At, you know, every single radio show, pretty much, or just before Donald Trump got elected, we were coming out, you know, saying, "Oh, well, we're, we're going to have to turn tribulation now into a into a twenty four by seven uh, uh, Donnie and Marie uh, uh, radio show," and um, we we're just joking. For, for must have been four or five. It was a lot of months. It was a bunch of months. I don't know how many exactly, but you know, consistently joking over and over again about you know, and I was playing like a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll, and I had to like the, you know the the scratchy album at the very end and all that, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden a report comes out because, you know, that the Trump did get elected and they were, ha- you know, the, or, or if Trump got elected, they were trying to choose who they were going to have play the different you know, musical uh, bands and such that they were going to have play at his inauguration. And to everybody's like, wow, you know, for me, it floored me. It absolutely floored me that um, uh, the word had come out uh, and rippled across the Internet, et cetera, that um, that Marie Osmond was going to sing at the Donald Trump inauguration. That actually was uh, on, uh, you know, some famous like People magazine or something like that. But it was a well-known, you know, several magazines. Uh, and she came out and, of course, you know, she categorically denied it. Uh, but the very fact that some major news media outlet in the midst of us kidding around about the, you know, becoming a Donnie and Marie <laughs> radio show and Trump got elected. And then there's this big hubbub about, uh, you know, Marie Osmond coming out and uh, uh, playing at the Donald Trump inauguration. I mean, tell me that isn't God. That is so totally all God. It doesn't get any better than that. I just about 
I just about cried. I was like, so beside, I was like, wow. And, um, you know, when I look back on all the things, what a blessing, you know, to be, have brought all of us to have been brought through the journey that we've gone through. And there are more people, there are more people. Remember the many times I've used the analogy of standing at the top, you know, uh, for those of us who have traveled by air, uh, a bunch at one point or another, we've walked up one of those, you know, uh, uh, you know, makeshift jetways or whatever that the big ladders that go up to the, to, to the entry of the jet or the plane and, and know what it's like to be able to stand there and, and turn around and look and see all the people still, you know, running across the tarmac to get on the plane. You know, that analogy stands true. Even today, there are people that are still waking up, you know, our brothers and sisters, God is waking them up. And um, uh, and it's exciting. You know, it's exciting to see them waking up to what time it is, not not falling into the trap of the Trump Trumpianity ambivalence, which is a is a is a guaranteed Willy Wonka golden ticket right to hell. Uh, you don't want to be a Laodicean no matter how you arrive there, no matter what. OK, uh, but for those of us who are waking up, waking up to the end times, you know, the end times timeline, uh, the, you know, all the things that are happening across the world. There was even an article on, uh, golly, what was it? Breaking Christian news or something, or it might've been charisma news where they, uh, where, where they were kind of waking up themselves and they put, you know, um, uh, some of the war situations in their headline. And then they put a question, you know, it's sign of the times question mark. And I'm like, hello, McFly. Of course it's sign of the time. Snap out of your coma. Uh, you know, I guess I've been listening to certain people out there, but um, when we look at the, you know, when I look at the, uh, you know, my impetuousness over the years, getting real super duper hyper excited, we look at the hyper cycles, I, you know, made that term up, hyper cycles uh, to describe, you know, these, uh, you know, September 23rd of 2015 dynamics that we go through, you know, for 20, you know, all that. I mean, goodness gracious, folks, there were like, I don't even know how many people that love Jesus with all their heart uh, with YouTube channels and such telling everybody that the meteor was going to hit in on that day. They believed that the rapture was going to occur and that, a you know, and then that the, you know, Ethan Rodriguez meteor was going to slam into uh, you know, the off off the coast of Puerto Rico, and the end of the world was going to happen. So, meteor was going to hit the Earth, and the rapture was going to happen. And uh, during the you know September twenty third to twenty fifteen, you know, these are hyper cycles, and we've been going through these hyper cycles that don't even get me going on twenty twelve. And many of us remember some of the. And what about eleven, eleven, eleven? Right, remember that November eleventh of twenty eleven. Remember that? Uh, for Many of us remember these things. We remember them because we were very, very excited. We believed, you know, we were hoping. We were hoping. We didn't. I wouldn't say that we believed it. Oh, and don't forget about Harold Camping. Remember that? May 1st. Uh, wasn't that May 1st, 2011? Something like that? I would, they were talking about that on Fox News. They are like, uh, televangelist or radio evangelist uh, Harold Camping has, you know, billboards all over the United States and da 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 My goodness, have we gone through a lot. You know, I was, I was flipping through uh, my... Um, my prophecies uh, word document. I it's like big, real big, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages. I think it's over a thousand pages of prophecies that I've been saving. I, I haven't been saving them as much lately because it's just so many. And I realize that it's a uh, it's information overload. Um, you know, when am I going to go back and look at them? And what value would there be anyway? Because really. Right now, we pretty much have the, 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 the goods. I mean, the Lord is revealed. Pretty much, just about for, to those of us who have been paying attention. Now, of course, he's going to continue to say, judgment, judgment, judgment is coming, judgment is coming, judgment is coming, judgment is coming. Why would he continue to say that when he's already been saying it for the last six, seven, eight years, et cetera, et cetera? Well, because not everybody has woken up, right? And there are new people that are discovering Wings of Prophecy, Just Praise Him, Julie Wedby, Bold I Come, God's Healer Son. People are waking up. People are still waking up. There are more people running for that big old, you know, uh, uh, jetway, that big old, uh, uh, you know, aluminum stairway that's, uh, that, that you're standing on top of looking across the tarmac. There are people running. They're saying, wait for me. Wait for me. You know, and, and we know that there's, you know, uh, going to be a point in time. I don't know if I would call it an appointed time like some people like to say. Uh, I, I, I think the concept of a floating appointed time is very interesting and very possible uh, that a floating appointed time would be when the fullness of the Gentiles is brought in. 
We don't know what that number is, but whenever that fullness period, whenever that number of the fullness of the Gentiles uh, being brought in, whenever that number occurs, God knows when that is, and that could be the appointed time. It doesn't have to be a calendar date like so many people believe. So it's exciting to watch all of these things, you know, and in, in the dynamics of my impetuous behavior, I go back and I look at my thousand plus page collection of prophecy, dreams and visions and all. And I review because we're supposed to examine ourselves. Amen. Now, we're not supposed to look back. We're not supposed to get all teary eyed and go oh, <laughs> Christmas in 1978. I was such a sinner. <laughs> Folks, forget about that. We look forward. We look ahead to Jesus. We we divorce ourselves of all of these things of this world. We, you know, keep our minds stayed on things above and not on this world. Imagine what the Apostle Paul must have been going through, you know, with his torment over his past. And boy, was he the right choice for that job. Hallelujah. But, um, you know, we just, but, but nevertheless, we still, you know, when I go back and I examine myself and I you know, remember what the Lord has told me and I look at the prophecy, dreams, and visions that I've collected over all of these years, and I review the various hyper cycles that we've gone through, uh, you know, um, uh, there's, there's something that I can take away from that. And that is that even though the prophets are, you know, the, well, I'll just call them my own personal A-list prophets. And, and, and if they start to say, you know, if, if somebody that is on my A-list, as I've shared with people before, if they start to say wacky things, you know, or things that I just like totally like, you know, everybody else is saying Colonel Mustard did it with a yellow shirt and a candlestick in the library. And then one of them just kind of starts saying, oh, it wasn't Colonel Mustard. It wasn't Colonel Mustard. I'll quietly take that individual and slide them down to my B list, or I'll slide them down to my private C list, or I'll just put them on the do not listen list. And I put a lot of people on the do not listen list. Once they go on the do not listen list, I don't turn back. I don't, I don't bring them back. Uh, you know, I might add somebody new uh, to the A list, but I won't take somebody that was put on the do not listen list and put them on the A list or, you know, move them back and forth. I don't shuffle them back and forth. Once they start saying it wasn't Colonel Mustard and they deviate too far off, you know, then I have to say, you know what, that particular witness for me is just not working anymore. They're not following the pattern. You know, God doesn't speak with a forked tongue, right? He, God's not going to say this, 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 and this, right? Over and over and over and over and over, over and over and over and over, over and over and over and over. And then a prophet's going to come along and say, no, 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 no. I, you know, I know there's another hundred prophets that that have been speaking, you know, and, and they're anointed and everything, but I don't believe that. I'm not going to, you know, and then they start to prophesy something different. You know, it wasn't Colonel Mustard. It was, Fra you know, Fred Frankfurter or whatever. Okay, fine. Then I just, you know, that's okay. I'll just, you know, put them on my little do not listen list and tuck them away. And that's okay. I still love them. I still love them. I do. And I'm going to give them all big hugs when we get to heaven. Praise Jesus. Uh, but, uh, but uh, you know, when I look back on all these things, when I go over that word doc, document, it really puts you into check. You know, it makes you say, oh, wow, there, for over 2011, 2012, 2013, we have prophecies that tribulation now is collected. Now, this has a point. I'm bringing a point up here, okay? Because I don't want to be, for the, the people that are listening to this radio show, I think it would be improper, having learned what I've learned, for what it's worth. I, let's hope that it's worth something. The tears that I have spent, the travail that I have spent, the sacrifices that I have made in my life, the, the, you know, the things that I have, you know, I'm not saying it's, it's not me, it's Jesus, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, it, but, you know, when I started doing the website back in 2009, it was because my heart was breaking that people didn't know the size of the darkness that was coming toward the earth. It was breaking my heart back then that people didn't realize that there were nanobot DNA creepy crawly creatures inside the chemtrails that that Morgellons was had fibrous almost like alien nanobot creatures in it you know that, that people don't realize how dark the darkness is people don't realize the capability of harp the problem is we tend to go too far we tend to make okay well harp does everything everything is harp 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 our, our father doesn't have any judgments anymore he has no power over hurricanes because harp gets credit for everything cern gets credit for everything see we take things a little bit too far we have a tendency to do that uh everything's a conspiracy uh you know everything's a conspiracy well maybe not maybe not everything we have to try to keep that level-headed wisdom, hopefully, that discernment flowing. 
at, you know, to be wise as serpents, but gentle as doves, right? And not, you know, flip out and, and go too far to the point where we, you know, jump on every single band. Oh, look, there's another hyper cycle. And the end of the world is going to be this September. The rapture is going to happen, right? We have to try our best. Look, folks, nobody, you know me, you should know me by now. And if you're a new listener to this radio program, then maybe you will get to know me, you know, praise Jesus. But here's the thing. If you if you have any idea my, my personality and 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 what I have wished for and the things that I've said over the years many many years in many many radio shows and all that, you know that nobody more than me wishes that uh, you know that there is going to be a first watch uh, you know barley harvest profit, uh, rapture that would happen on September 23rd. I would love it. I would love it. But I don't have the supporting prophecies, dreams, and visions. They have to be there because our Father says, surely the Lord God does nothing without first revealing it to his servants and prophets. But you've got to watch out because there are a lot of young, God bless their sweethearts, and oh my, I get sucked into it myself. I can't help it. I see their tears coming down their eyes, and they have YouTube channels, and a lot of them are, are, are you know, just they love Jesus so much. You can tell. You feel it. You can feel it. And and I have been um, sucked down that uh, uh, that vortex, that vortex of emotion, that, 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 that riptide rush of Jesus told me that there's going to be a rapture on September 23rd. I have been through this so many times, and I have cried humongous tears, uh, and um, because of that, I have had to stop listening, you know, stop probing around on YouTube, because if you probe around on YouTube, you will discover that not only Donald Duck, but Mickey Mouse are both the Antichrist. And uh, and and or 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 whatever, you know what I'm saying? There, you can find somebody who loves Jesus with all their heart that is positive beyond any shadow of a doubt. They are hearing from the Lord, or they have been visited by Jesus, and that Jesus told them, or their two-year-old child, or their three-year-old child, or whatever, has received a vision, and that the rapture is absolutely going to happen on September the 23rd of this month. Hallelujah. And they're bawling. You can see the tears coming down their eyes, and they just, they're gushing. And pe- we what do we do? We can't help it. Those of us who have the overwhelming love of the Lord Jesus Christ in us, when we watch that stuff and we hunger and thirst for the presence of our Lord Jesus, uh, what, what's going to happen? You're going to be pulled into that. You're going to be, you're going to, your spirit will merge with those emotions that you're looking at on that YouTube channel, on that video, and you will get you know, you will just get pulled right into that and your emotions and you will start to, some of, some of us will cry along with that individual and our hopes will be just raised up and we'll be so excited. I have been down this street 10,000 times. Okay, that's an exaggeration. I don't know how many times, but it has been a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of times over the last several years. Now, does that mean that I'm, you know, um, a, a big meanie and that I don't, you know, I totally empathize with that. But what we got, I think, what we need to do as best as we can is while we keep that hope going, that maybe we got it wrong. Maybe it's both, right? Could it be all of the above? Could there be more than meets the eye? Is there more than we know that's lined up for to happen. We don't know what we don't know, right? We don't. We don't know what we don't know, and we don't know. And anybody who thinks they've got the Father figured out, oh boy, they're all in for a big surprise. If anyone thinks they know anything, they know nothing yet, as they ought to know. First Corinthians 8, 2. So we all eat a big, gigantic piece of humble crow pie, delicious humble crow pie, and we hope. But we also hope with sobriety and wisdom. And we recognize that hopefully, now if, if you're still in the stage that I was in in 2011, and you're still hungry, you got tears pouring down your face, and you're clicking around on YouTube, and you're listening to all those new young people out there, God bless their sweethearts, loving Jesus and tears and visions of the rapture on September 23rd, then... um then you're going to go where you go. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, 
It may very well be part of our journey. It may very well be part of how God brings us to that patience of Job. Maybe we all have to go through our 88 reasons why there's a rapture, why the rapture will be in 1988. Maybe we all have to go through our late great planet Earth uh, phase. For me, uh, it was multiple hyper cycles over the last six plus years. Now, I must admit, the, uh, the, the, the great eclipse, the warning shot over the bow with the um, uh, biblical blood moon tetrad, which I don't believe the next one happens until like 25 AD, or, you know, 25 AD, 25 AD, AD, long time from now. Um, the uh, blood moon uh, pattern that is overlaid over the biblical blood moon tetrad. You have to see the graphics. You have to see the JPL, uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory graphics from NASA that show the three blood moon, uh, four blood moon, three blood moon pattern. And the last three blood moons occurs in at the end of 2018 and the early part of 2019. What does it mean? I don't know. Is that a marker for the beginning of the Great Tribulation? Are we about to have that big red lever get pulled and and be thrown headfirst into the most horrific period of sorrows? Of that's what Jesus called it. The beginning of he he on, right now we're already in the beginning of sorrows. Just the headlines that we read on this radio show every show prove that we are deep deep into the beginning of sorrows. But the end is not yet. Okay, well, we have got to go through the sorrows period, right? All right, we, and, and where is that in the Bible? Well, you can reason out pretty clearly that it's in Revelation chapter 6. You know, it's, it's the Psalm 83 war, Gog and Magog, it's the, you know, the seals, uh, all that stuff. We've talked about that on multiple programs. All right, so the one thing that I might be able to bring forward as a as a contribution to the kingdom, perhaps, is the experiences that I've gone through on the roller coaster ride of hypercycles. And not that I'm not excited, because I am excited, but I'm also trying as hard as I can to bring reason and a sense of wisdom to the watching for the period that we're about to get thrown into. We know it is imminent. We know that there's no turning back once it occurs. Some of the prophets out there are mentioning uh, events, you know, a big event. Once that event occurs, okay, there are different prophets saying different kinds of events. So it gets a little unclear. Um, but how much are we going to see the freight train heading at us? That's the kind of stuff I ask myself. So what I'm doing is, as it was prophesied um, in uh, the God's Healer 7 prophecy, and let me see if I can find it. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, I'm not sure. I did not queue it up. So um, sudden destruction, take hold. Okay, so I'm going to play this prophecy uh, from God's Healer 7. This is from a ways back. It might even be like a year old. I'm not sure. Hold on, but let's play this, okay? Here we go. The journey continues as destiny approaches. Time is measured not in hours, but in events. Let the humble man proclaim my glory, for I am the everlasting light. Remove turmoil and what remains is peace. Remove sorrow, and there remains joy. Remove doubt, and there remains hope. Remove darkness, and there remains light. Those that seek me shall find me. Let obedience and perseverance, perseverance be, warded, be rewarded, for time shall tally all deeds. What was left fallow shall now be planted, for time is of the essence. Take hold of your lamp and be prepared for your maker, for what appeared in the distance is suddenly upon you. 
All right, praise God. Now that was Take Hold of Your Lamp by God's Healer 7. Take Hold of Your Lamp, God's Healer Healer 7. All right, I hit enter. It pops up, and let's take a look. May 29th of 2015. Okay, May 29th of 2015, praise God. All right, now, and you heard in the beginning of that prophecy, it says time is measured not in hours, but in events. Events, right? So, now we have, I know that there are a lot of incredibly anointed prophets that I love that are on my A-list that are saying, Judgments are right now, but but do keep in mind that they have been the Lord has been using them to say those same words, okay, for a while now, for a long, long while now, in some cases years. Okay, 2015, 2016, 2017. So we got two years just to the one that I just played. Two years. It's roughly it's two years old. Okay, so time is measured not in hours, but in events right? Okay, so praise Jesus. So um, why am I bringing all this up? Okay, first, A, we need to be excited, and we need to be ready for the unexpected. B, uh, could we be totally blown away, and there be some type of supernatural event that occurs? Could there even be possibly a, um, you know, an old uh, fat people's harvest, you know, maybe there is. We don't know what the first, you know, I, I, and by the way, I'm holding up my hand because I want to be on that one. Praise Jesus. Although I have been doing pretty good on my diet, but I'm just saying. Old, how about this one? Old, tired people's rapture, OTPR. Maybe there's an OTPR rapture, right, called the first watch. You refer to Luke 12, 37, 38. You know, Jesus comes back for the second watch and the third watch, and blessed is he and all that. All right, so could there be that? Could there be something that blows us away, completely surprises us, throws everybody off? And of course, they're going to blame it on the aliens anyway. So the church will jump on that bandwagon. The, the sinning, the sinning once saved, always saved Laodicean church will be going, that wasn't no rapture. That was the, that was the, and there'll be all these people who believe in the rapture that weren't living in true righteousness and holiness. And they'll be saying, oh yeah, 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 that was the aliens. Oh, yeah, you can believe it, folks. You can believe it. The, the evangelical churchianity will be pointing to the real rapture events as alien, in, uh, you know, as, oh, that's, that's that movie Skyline. Yeah, yeah, the, the aliens took them. And you know why? Because they won't be able to believe, just like the cessationists. The cessationists believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues died with the apostles. You know why? Because they didn't receive it. If they didn't receive the gift of tongues, then it had to have died, and everybody who speaks in tongues is of the devil. That's how it works. And so they create cessationism, right, which I think might be, heaven forbid, oh, heaven forbid, God help them, possibly a type of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But anyway, I don't know. I I don't know. I pray it isn't. I hope it isn't. Oh, please. But anyway... Back on track. So time is measured not in hours, but in events. So what does this have to do with whatever? Okay, here's what has to do with what. Why am I bringing this up? I hope that I can be a voice of reason in the wilderness of tears and excitement and screaming and impetuousness and roller coaster and all that other stuff that's going on out there. There's nothing wrong with being excited about the times that we are in right now. We should be beside ourselves with excitement. A, be prepared for the un, unexpected, for sure. Amen. Be prepared for, for something to happen that you know might be supernatural and who knows, could be – you know, a multi-phase rescue mission type of a thing. We don't know because we just don't know, okay? Now, what we do know is that Amos 3, 7 says, Surely the Lord God does nothing without first revealing it through his servants, the prophets. And I would think that God, our Father, would use one of his A-list prophets, one of the people that we've been monitoring, you know, for years that have been consistently on queue and have not deviated, not slipped into the Donald Trump is this, that, and the other king of that and this, or God is blessing America nonsense, okay? But the, the ones that have stayed on cue, like Jeremiah, like Isaiah, like Ezekiel, praise his holy name, thank you, Jesus. All right, so God would certainly, look, God came through with God's healer seven. They mentioned Obama. Uh, you know, uh, look, we're, we're, everything is queued up. Everything is queued up. It looks amazing. Our situation is blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
So you say, well, John the Baptist, what are you doing? What, you know, what, what is your point? My point is this. I'm watching Irma. Now, there's a side of me. Yeah, Hurricane Irma. That's what I'm talking about. There's a side of me that is being – I don't. I can't, how do I explain this? After seeing the devastation and the flooding, I, I'm, I'm in a state of, of emotional repentance, inspecting my heart. I wonder to myself why I could feel so much compassion for some of those people that are being affected negatively by Harvey and the floods in Houston, but yet I, don't, I didn't have that same compassion for the people in the Sudan, for the people in, uh, you know, in, in, in other parts of the world. That, you know, what about the people, that, the 400 people that were buried under the mud in Sierra Leone? You know, why didn't I have the same level of compassion? You know, probably because we're not – it's not in our face like it is here in the United States of Babylon the Great with the television show, the television, putting it in your face, 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 everywhere you turn, everywhere you turn. What are you looking at? You're looking at devastation. You're looking at little kids in bad situations. If they did that same thing for the people that are being you know, pillaged in their churches, uh, pillaged and grenades rolled in and explosions and Boko Haram and stuff in Africa and the, the slaughter and stuff that's going on over there. Folks, if we were exposed to it, we would probably be in tears over that too. Where I'm going with this is I'm watching Irma and I'm praying over it. And I'm I'm in a I'm struggling, in a sense that there's a side of me that doesn't want to see anybody go through bad stuff. I just don't want to see it. And there are prophecies from going back to 2013 uh, from uh, Bond's blog, Sister Bonnie, uh, from Bond's blog. There are prophecies from her, prophecies from Glenda Lomax, uh, prophecies from uh, Julie Webby. There's so many, so many uh, really awesome pro- prophets over the years that have prophesied that some of the things that we're going to see as part of the Bride of Jesus Christ, we're going to wish that we didn't see. You know, that Psalm 91 stuff. And I'm already arriving at that place. But my my Hal Lindsey, late great planet Earth wisdom, my roller coaster ride, um, uh, uh, hyper cycle impetuousness is making me look, and I'm following that prophecy that says, you know, time is not measured in hours but in events, and I'm looking at Irma. I know and love dearly the people that have prophesied that su- that the turning point is in se- in September, and it very well may be. A lot of those people will pro- have prophesied that the turning point was at a different time as well, which it probably could have been. We don't know. We're going to have to keep on watching and just listening and keep our heads down, a humble and contrite heart, loving and praying in travail for the souls and the awakening of our fellow brothers and sisters and the awakening of the unsaved and for for their being brought to the foot of the cross by God's angels. Amen? But I am watching to see if that turning point is now, like some are saying. Because if the judgment turning point was indeed at the point where Harvey hit Texas, if that was a an omen of a sort, a supernatural omen, an actual act of judgment. Now, God's in control of everything, so that gets a little gray. But we're talking about the judgment period. Dun, dun, dun. The big red lever. The turning point, okay? Are you following me here? Not just, you know, another hurricane that was horrible and people, I mean, folks, it was just a couple of years ago that there were terrible hurricanes in uh, South Carolina and people were flooded out. It was absolutely horrendous. Um, there were people that are involved in this ministry that were, uh, that, you know, that, whose husbands were involved with FEMA and down there try, getting people uh, unburied out of that horrible, horrible situation. So, so is this it? Is September of 2017, don't forget, oh my gosh, do we have a lot of pointers, right? The centennial anniversary of, of, of the, uh, is it the third secret of Fatima? Is, is that meaningful or not? Do we toss it? 
What about all these people saying that December 21st of 2017 is the actual ninth wave of the Mayan calendar? Hmm? Could it be? Do they align? Why would we care about, you know, things like the Mayan calendar? Well, we would care about them because the the light rises. Jesus and his light and his bride rise up as the darkness rises. The darker the darkness rises, the lighter the light becomes. And then and then the the quintessential example of that is when the great tribulation begins, you know, just prior to that is when the rapture of the bride of Jesus Christ occurs with the final harvest. Okay, the people that become the guests at the wedding supper, Matthew 22. Which, by the way, Matthew 22 doesn't have anything in there. I don't see anything in Matthew 22 that even hints around about, you know, an early rapture. It just identifies the servants of God who love Jesus, you know, essentially, uh, in a metaphor, in metaphor more metaphorical manner, uh, uh, staying and harvesting the people, staying and harvesting the final harvest, the good and the bad, you know? So is the turning point now, and if the turning point has occurred, would it not stand to reason that Irma would be bad? Well, so I'm watching Irma very closely right now. Now, of course, I'm not liking the fact that the thing is pointing right at me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Uh, but uh, And I certainly don't like the, possi- the some of the trajectories and models that are showing that thing kind of sneaking around the keys and wiggling its way into the you know, Gulf of Mexico. That does not set well with me at all. All right. But. I'm just saying that we could get, you know, where I live here at the Golden EIB Studios in Tampa, Florida, we could we could get pounded by that thing even if it came across the state. And I don't want it to, you know, and if it gets deflected and goes up north and there are people saying 9-11 is going to hit New York and New York is going to be under judgment. And, oh, my gosh, it's just that speculation is unbelievable. But what we don't know is what we don't know. And you can believe especially with the stuff that went on with Harvey, that there's a lot of Christians right now. A lot of them are good ones. A lot of them are very good ones, anointed and holy, are praying hard that Irma bugs off. Could the father listen? Why wouldn't he? Or was the big red lever pulled already? Or does it begin when the event occurs? Is there going to be a consistent ramp up of judgment like events that get worse and worse and worse and worse until the event, whatever that event is? See? These are the kind of things that keep me up at night. Well, they don't keep me up. My dogs do sometimes. But anyway, the, you see where I'm heading with this? So I'm listening, I'm hearing it, but I also want to be a voice of reason. You know, uh, Johnny Baptist in the wilderness, <laughs> crying out with his, uh, you know, eating locusts and honey and all that stuff. You know, I, 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 want, I'm, I, don't, I want to try to be a voice of reason amidst all of the tears, all of the excitement, because that's what I was not. In 2011, that's what I was not in 2012. That's what I was not in 2013, 2014, etc. It wasn't until about 2015 that I started to look at things a little bit differently and say, "Hmm, glory be to Jesus, hallelujah." Because by then I had had enough prophecies that had rolled in that powerfully witnessed. They they spoke from the throne room of God saying that the bride of Jesus Christ would be here for the final harvest. We would be on the earth. So uh, we're going to have to watch. We're going to have to wait and see. Is it going to be all of the above? Have we actually passed that turning point? And will Irma turn into this awful judgment bowling ball that just comes barreling into some coastal city uh, uh, and 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 be that wake up call to all of us who are watching for the events of judgment as the turning point, legitimized, not just a spiritual turning point. We may have passed a couple of those already, but a but legitimized by empirical evidence, things that we can see with our eyes here in the earthly, made manifest in this time, space, matter, universe. And that's when things will get really exciting, but they will also be heartbreaking as well. And we will spend a lot of time praying in travail and tears as we ought to be now, but a lot more. 
Amen. Praise Jesus. Jose? Brother, it's um I'm you know, it's interesting and I and I love that you're talking about that because a call to to a little bit of a more rational frame of mind is definitely needed when dealing with this because we don't want to look like kooks, you know. Christianity is already hated amongst the world and there's people who don't like Christianity. And the simple reason is because they feel that this is a ethereal God thing. I don't know what that is, spiritual mumbo jumbo. And so, man, it doesn't help if we start crying wolf every now and then and telling them the world's going to end in seven days. No, no, no. Wait, 14. Okay, no, 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 no. Next month, man, it doesn't make us look good. On the practical side, um, I'm, a, I'm a more of a practical person. You know, in reality, I hate to say it, but in reality, things don't change for me because I'm called to act with love and kindness no matter what day it is. I'm called to love my God with all my heart, mind, and soul no matter what day it is. Pre-rapture, post-rapture, pre-wrath, doesn't matter at all. I'm, I'm, I have a, a mission, and the Lord wants obedience for me and from me. And so the best thing that I can do is, is, is watch, and in the meantime, tend to the flock, do what I'm asked by the Lord, be obedient to his commands, love everybody with, with all my heart, mind, and soul, you know, love my neighbor as myself, and walking through that sanctification process. Because in some ways, I want to go home now. I mean, man, I would love to go see Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit. I, I can't wait to praise and worship you in the new Jerusalem day and night. Um, but on the other hand, um, there's a sanctification process that is still working within me, that the Holy Spirit is still moving me to be a better man and a better person and to be more like Christ every day. And so the longer that it takes, the more sanctified I become. And, and I think the better I will be in heaven uh, and the more pleasing to my Lord I will be. And of course, the more sanctified I am, the better worker in the field I can be. You see, and, 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 and that's super important because if it happens tomorrow, I might not be ready. I might, not, I might not have the love and compassion and care that I need to in order to bring more sheep into the fold. And so maybe God's waiting a little bit, not only to give time for all those to, to repent and to come to the Lord and to see the light, the truth, uh, and the light, which is Jesus, but also to help prepare the workers. Give the workers a little more time to become more sanctified, more patient, to have to bear more fruit, to show a little bit more of the spirit, you know, of the Holy Spirit. So it's a win-win situation. If we go tomorrow, hallelujah, praise Jesus. But if we have to wait a while, oh, great, I get to be more sanctified. I get to practice uh, all the stuff that the Lord has been teaching me. And it's, you know, hey, it's a great win. We'll get to be better workers for him. So from a practical standpoint, all we really matter is that we get ready. Let us, let us, our Father, find us worthy to skip all these things. Back to you, John. Yeah, amen. Praise God. So true. All right. And boy, oh boy, we got Brother Sammy joining us, Sammy Milwaukee joining us from Pipes International in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and barrel through this. Oh, my gosh. It's an amazing amount. I mean, it just it never ends, folks. It just keeps getting more and more. All right. And let's go ahead and just jump in. All right, and this is uh, from uh, uh, James ba Bailey's website, uh, Praise Jesus and uh, Z3 News, and the title of this is When You See This, It Has Begun. And, it, and, and it, I'll just read. Ex exactly eight years ago today, on August the 30th of 2009, Brother Billy Nelson had a prophetic dream in which he saw great destruction in Houston, Texas, which he describes as follows. And he says, he basically, I'm just going to cut to the chase. He sees massive amounts of debris coming down waterway, roofs, how, how, tr you know, trash floating in the water. Uh, so the, the, the idea here is that Brother Billy Nelson was... Uh, you know, heard the voice of the Lord when he saw, you know, what's happening, you know, essentially in Houston. And uh, when you see this, it has begun. That's the voice that he heard in his heart from the Lord. Now, 
we're going to have to wait and see if that is the case. Now, here's the thing. If Irma doesn't turn into a hor- horrific, terrible thing, does that mean that it has not begun? Well, you can't. It can't make it that simple, but I am certainly watching the events from this point henceforth because if it has indeed begun, it would stand to reason we would see an ever-increasing crescendo of ugly, right? So, and and we could we could stay in a state of uh, you know uh, judgment stasis like we've been you know for some time now, at least to those of us who are looking for the big events, uh, and uh, and you know like the 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 North Korean event. Oh boy, is that bubbling up into you know that just continues to get worse and worse. We've Iran, Israel, Syria. That stuff is still going on. It is unbelievable. So anyway, let's just go ahead and hit the headlines and be aware. That it appears the fuse has been lit. All right, praise Jesus. Also, real quick, uh, I'd like to get Brother Jose to comment on uh, his restaurant chain that he didn't tell me about. Jose, when were you going to tell me that you have this awesome Tex Mex restaurant chain uh, uh, out there, you know, in Mississippi and different places? Well, sir, I, I, I was going to tell you, but, you know, it, it's just I was preparing the news for you. For you. Oh, okay. Man, it looks like a great place, uh, but too many carbs for me. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the listeners sent in, um, uh, they found out that there was a No Way Jose Tex-Mex restaurant in Mississippi, and uh, thank you for sending that in. That is just too hilarious. Praise Jesus. All right. Anyway. Had to throw that in there. Too funny. All right. So we, we, you know, are we at the turning point? Well, we don't know. Let's go ahead and and uh, jump into the rest of the news. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? It's not normal. It's just wrong. Uh, what? It's not normal. This is disturbing. <laughs> Game over. Creepy trumpet sounds emanate from an Iranian sky. Oh, and by the way, folks, the uh, sky trumpets, which are by, they are from the fallen angels. Okay, I've I've heard all the stories. Even uh, a newscaster, which I have in, uh, on the soundboard, even a newscaster saying that it sounded like a moose off in the distance. A moose. Okay, I've heard all the stories. Uh, trumpets of the angels, <laughs> folks. If it's trumpets of angels, it's fallen angels. People have already filmed large spacecraft, not from this earth, in the sky at the time that these apocalyptic creepy trumpet sounds are rippling across the countryside. So it's to me, it's the jury's out. It's case closed. It is the fallen angels. All right. Now, that being said, we're the aliens. All right. Now, now check it out. This is from Sputnik News. Okay. So this is kind of quasi-mainstream. And they uh, recorded this. Uh, creep, they call it creepy trumpet sounds over uh, uh, a city in Iran. Listen to this. I guess it could be a moose, but I don't think it is. Some creepy stuff. And some of the other ones sound just like the, the War of the World tripod sound, like the one. Uh, oh, by the way, there's another article that's out, Mysterious Sounds in the Sky above Budapest, Hungary, uh, and, and the Defense Housing Authority in Karachi, Pakistan. Um, Budapest, hallelujah. Listen to this one from Budapest from a few years ago. I mean, that is some creepy, weird stuff. And then you've got the uh, uh, the War of the Worlds tripod sounds that, you know, uh, were, you know, I mean, is this a coincidence? I don't know. My 
hunch is that it's not a coincidence. <laughs> okay. And that uh, they're back. They're back. That little blind girl from Poltergeist. They're back. So, anyway, they're back big time. North Korea claims successful hydrogen bomb test. North Korea claims successful hydrogen bomb test. Six five point no six point three earthquake was uh, measured. Freaked a lot of people out. Of course, got Trump shaking his fist in the air and all kinds of threats. And Mattis, uh, General Mattis is out. You know, saying stuff. I'll read that in a second. North Korea tests the most powerful nuclear bomb yet. That would be thermonuclear now fusion, not fission. That's bad news. Japanese military estimates North Korean nuclear weapons yield are, are yielding a 70 kilotons. They, that's what they're estimating based upon the uh, shaking of the earth and some of the other things that they're looking at. Listen to this. This is General Mattis. Just made this announcement, I think, today. I think it was today uh, from the uh, outside the White House. It says massive, this is what he said, massive military response if North Korea threatens the United States or allies. What, what, what does that mean, threaten? He's already threatening. He's threatening, threatening, threatening. What does this mean? We don't know. We're just going to have to keep watching. Listen to this. Charisma News, I mentioned this earlier. Charisma News, headlines, signs of the times, question mark. Iranian threat moves closer to Israel. And it goes on to say the Islamic Republic of Iran seems to be working overtime to increase its influence in the Gaza Strip on Israel in, on, in, on Israeli's uh, south southern border and in Syria and Lebanon in the north. Oh, Wow. A lot of stuff going on over there. Praise Jesus. And they, it just cracks me up that they're saying, signs of the times, question <laughs> mark. Uh, hopefully they're not, you know, the seven mountain people and, you know, we're going to be here forever until Christianity takes over the world. And uh, Where is that in the Bible? Russia responds to Netanyahu's ultimatum in Syria with a warning to Israel. Wow. That's pretty biblical. Russia responds to Netanyahu's ultimatum in Syria with a warning to Israel. Last week, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned Russian President Vladimir Putin in, uh, in person that Israel will not tolerate an Iranian military presence in Syria that threatens Israeli interests. Oh, boy. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, by the way, you can take the question mark and erase it off of your headline there, Charisma News. <laughs> uh, Christian News. Man who lost all in the Hurricane Harvey still declares that God is good. Woman sings gospel songs for evacuees. Praise God. Irma turning into a monster hurricane. Highest wind speed forecast I've ever seen, according to this particular uh, um, uh, uh, author of this article uh, that is uh, coming from Zero Hedge. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, of course, people are going to be all kind of you know, freaked out and saying things. And the projections are, uh, by the time it hits, they're saying that the most highest level of probability, <coughs> um, excuse me, the highest level of prob probability uh, in its tra trajectory, puts it uh, on a path where it skims over uh, Hispaniola, which is the Dominican Republic and, and, and uh, uh, Haiti, and then uh, it kind of skims over the northern end of that, you know, that, them, uh, and then plows into the Bahamas, heading straight for Florida. However, the majority of the, because of some highs and lows and lows and highs and highs and lows and things, uh, it, you know, the various spaghetti models show, the majority of them show it actually grazing the coast of Florida and then heading up toward either Georgia or the Carolinas or who knows. So we'll have to wait and see. All right. That's what I'm watching for to see if we've made that, you know, a major turning point in God's judgments or if we can potentially, you know, watch. You know, maybe we'll have a normal holiday season yet. We don't know. We're watching to see. All right. Uh, Charisma News. Pro-LGBT Christians taking aim at Bible-based Nashville state uh, statement. Okay, so a group of Christians, well-known, uh, including Francis Chan, John Piper, Russell Moore, and many, many others, have gotten together and they signed a Nashville statement, uh, you know, making a proclamation that the Bible says you can't be LGBT, LMNOP, QRST, and go to heaven. And oh my gosh, the outcry from pastors and theologians and ecumenical 
Christian, oh my gosh, they're freaking out and they're telling people, no, God loves everybody. It's okay. And I'm like, wait a minute. Am I seeing this? But yes, we are seeing it. And this is a prophecy from Glinda Lomax at Wings of Prophecy. Just praise him. Time of judgments. Quote, the time of judgments is upon my people. Judgments will begin to happen all around you now, my people. You will see judgments happening in the lives of those you uh, know who have refused to repent. You will see them happening on a national scale as well. You, folks, and that includes you in France and Spain and Taiwan and Okinawa and all the other places, and, you know, it's, it is worldwide. You must accustom yourself to seeing these judgments and what accompanies them, for they will not cease now. My word is being fulfilled in its entirety so that I may return for you. Hallelujah. Take heed that you remain humble and repent, re, uh, repentant. Are, oh, and repent yourselves that ye that you need not be chastened in your remaining time on the earth. Uh, I'm going to second that with a hearty amen. Pray for those who are. Show kindness and compassion to those who are suffering and give give to those in need. Amen to that. In this way, you will be storing up treasures in heaven where you will be soon. Yes. The end is not far off. Is not a far off time, my children, for you are progressing swiftly towards it, even now. Praise Jesus, Jose. It's um, wow, that's that is just oof, gives me goosebumps. It's 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 coming, it really is. And the amazing thing is, is that there's a ton of data out there to corroborate that. Um, earthquakes are increasing, um, tsunamis are increasing. Volcanic activity is increasing. So we just got to be at the ready. We have to be at the ready because this thing, the, the good Lord is about to pull the red lever down, and this thing's about to go very, very fast, very, very quickly. So let's just be ready and uh, make sure we can please the Lord. Back to you, Johnny. Oh, yeah. Amen to that. Praise God. Yes, we got to be ready. We got to stay excited. We got to be ready. Don't slip into a state of ambivalence. Don't slip into a state of coma. Don't join the, the, the you know, Seven Mountain Movement. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Uh, you know, heads down, contrite spirit. All right. Praise Jesus. Uh, and on that note, uh, you know what? I'm going to take the time because I just love the kids. Right, kids? Yeah. Kids, why did the M&M go to college? Because he wanted to be a smarty. <laughs> Kids? Ha. Ha. I knew that you would like that because you kids know what smarties are, don't you? And they're yummy. <laughs> yeah. I had a big five pound bag of smarties before I went on this diet. <laughs> I've got candy all over the house still, but I'm not going to touch it. All right, kids, ready? How was the horse able to pay for all of its hay? It had a stable income. Kids? Oh, oh, yeah, you don't care much about incomes. You guys aren't working, are you? Kids, are you working? <laughs> I knew it. Oh, man. Boy, to live the good life like that again. All right. What kind of car does a tiger drive? A cat lac <laughs> What do you think, kids? <laughs> <laughs> All right, praise God. At least I got the last one good. All right, praise Jesus. And let's go ahead and hit the uh, main news segment. It's not normal. Wow. All right, as in the days of Noah. Triple threat, new pneumonia is drug-resistant, deadly, and contagious. In the past few years, there have been so many superbugs appearing in the hospitals around the world. And it goes on to say that uh, uh, that we here at Goats and Soda, 
uh, haven't had the, the time or resources to report on all of them. So this particular article is written by an organization that, that's called Goats and Soda. But it says that this new type of pneumonia is emerging out of China uh, and that uh, the doctors in Hangzhou Hospital are not able to cure it. And it's a, it's a sign of another emerging superbug in the form of a type of deadly and contagious pneumonia. All right, next. Uh, uh, physicist uh, confirms Bob Lazar worked at Los Alamos. Okay, so Bob Lazar, popularly known for his claims of working at a top secret engineering related extraterrestrial space facility, it says at Area 51. It was not Area 51. The people that wrote this article made a boo boo. It was called S. Four. And by the way, uh, anybody out there who is uh, confirming the testimony of uh, – and I know some people clump Area 51 and S4 into the same group, Groom Lake and all that kind of stuff, but you know, I, it's S4. And, um, and you know what? If, if another physicist is out there confirming uh, that he worked and that you know, Lazar, Bob Lazar is the real deal, then hallelujah. Because you know what? He is. All right, praise Jesus. Listen to this. This is from The Sun out of the U.K. Killer clowns are back. They make a comeback. Uh, U.S. cops warn of killer clowns return this month in anticipation of its film release that tells the story of the demon jester. Pennsylvania State Police Department issued community awareness bulletins about clowns who were also cited in several British cities. Killer clowns. And, and this is like real stuff. Now, I have I, I think there was one report of some I don't know, attacks. I don't think that – I'm not sure. There may have even been a report of one that turned deadly, but you know what? There was a lot of creepy killer clown events that occurred several months ago, and it looks like it's back on the uptick. Another headline, mysterious blue light is moving uh, – and moving objects are filmed uh, at the uh, International Space Sta uh, Station. By the way, this stuff is like you know every week, uh, and, uh, and there's another headline that says um, – uh, it says uh, – this particular one says, every now and then NASA outdoes itself, and it shows this uh, video from June the 30th, and sure enough, this is a very impressive – uh, otherworldly object filmed outside of the ISS. Uh, creepy stuff, folks. Homeless man claims to be a vampire, rips a pigeon's head off, it drinks its blood at Bryant Park. Uh, kids, don't pay attention. Okay, that's good. Put your, put your hands over your ears. All right. $100 million ET hunt spots 15 mysterious light flashes. $100 million search uh, for intelligent aliens has spied 15 bizarre repeating flashes of light coming from a distant galaxy. FRB 121102 lies, you know, 3 billion light years away, and uh, search for extraterrestrial intelligence is on the move again, and big money and all that kind of stuff, and they're seeing stuff, which, you know, surprise. Surprise, 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 right? Uh, listen to this. Mysterious si – this is from CNET, CNET, CNET.com. Uh, uh, mysterious signal from deep space goes hyperactive. Scientists searching the cosmos for signs of intelligent life pick up the only known repeating fast radio burst again and are asking others to tune in too. Mysterious universe, an alien being spotted in North Carolina sewer. Again, it says, and this time it's a lizard man. <sighs> Praise God. Jose? Brother, you know what amazes me about the news part of the show? There's not a shortage of news. And the other thing is that as long as I've been in, on the show and as long as I've been listening, things just get weirder and weirder and weirder. Like that whole... You know, men believe claiming to be a vampire, rip pigeons' heads and drinks blood. I, I don't remember that except nowadays. And that whole bacteria thing is bacteria is getting worse, drug resistant. Their their tears are gonna get us. So, brother, this must be the last the last days if everything if we don't have any shortage of news. God bless. Back to you, Johnny. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, I, I have a, a, a Word document that has gotten so big, and I got 16 gig on this machine. I have a very powerful computer, and, uh, and, and this Word document has become so big because I kept putting the most, the most apocalyptic of all the apocalyptic headlines from every show, the, you know, the top – Two or three head apocalyptic headlines. I would grab them, snatch them out, copy and paste them into this one word document. And it has become so mammoth, so huge that I, I, it like causes 
my computer to like you know go into spasms. It's just unbelievable. Praise God. All right, let's go into the signs and the sun and the moon and the star seas roaring. A new cluster of 43 quakes overnight, just 60 miles from Yellowstone, the biggest being an impressive magnitude 5.3. All right, and the, the Yellowstone uh, uptick on the quake swarms is really, I mean, it's it's garnered headline news uh, attention from major news media, major scientific, major colleges and universities are all looking into it. This is no longer the rumblings of, you know, one lone voice in the wilderness, Mary, Gre- or, you know, Mary Greeley in the crickets, you know, on YouTube. <laughs> this is, folks, this is like everybody is like pointing the Yellowstone going, oh, my gosh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So uh, way to go, Mary Greeley, uh, spotting this stuff early on. All right. And I'm, I'm, pull- I'm talking about like 2000. 11 folks all right now, you know so don't don't send me emails and say no so and so spotted it first I, you know what it doesn't matter all right associated press earthquake rumbles th- uh, through the south e- southeastern uh, uh, you know idaho which is also in the this is from the ap folks this is an example of what i'm talking about all right so they're pointing out uh, unusual places where earthquakes are occurring 63 miles from uh P- P- pocatello 103 miles from salt lake city this is weird, okay, and it's right in the same vicinity. Listen to this headline. Largest wildfire in Los Angeles history forces hundreds to evacuate, okay? It just, it just keeps getting worse. Yellowstone supervolcano. This is from Newsweek. Yellowstone supervolcano earthquake swarm now one of the biggest on record with over 2,300 tremors. Newsweek. Five years ago, Newsweek could have given, you know, any – they wouldn't have cared, now everybody's talking about it. Okay, then we already talked about Irma coming, so we'll watch, we'll watch, we'll see. Record temperature shattered in San Francisco, 115 degrees. Another headline, after extreme water receding, this is talking about these mini tsunami events where the water recedes back into the ocean off the coast of Brazil, Argentina, uh, different places, Uruguay. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's unbelievable. There's, there's, now it says there's tidal, Atlantic tidal storm floods at Punta del Este, Uruguay. Creepy, weird, strange, bizarre, apocalyptic weirdness. Uh, another headline, Nigeria floods displace more than 100,000 people. Wow. Unbelievable. Well, it is believable because we've been reporting it for five years and it's been getting worse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And now let's go ahead and do New World Order, violence, insanity, upheaval, and rumors of wars. And I see you there, Brother Sammy. We're coming to you. You're up next. All right. Praise Jesus. All right. And uh, this is uh, 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 New World Order, upheaval, insanity, and rumors of wars. Here we go. Harvey aftermath, toxic waste sites flooded in Texas, according to the EPA, and chemical plants blowing up, explosions, all kinds of awful aftermath stuff, and this is just going to go on and on. Probably, I don't know if there are any nuclear plants there, but if there are... Well, we probably haven't heard the last of that. Guatemala is on the verge of a major crisis. Who who would have known? Well, guess what? <laughs> Here we are talking about it. Guatemala's war on corruption just escalated as the presidency and a United Nations-backed anti-graft body face-off. Uh, you know, again, they've got uh, uprisings all over the world, and now uh, Guatemala has joined in. All right, and it's going to be it's going to be even more so. Just keep watching. Stay tuned. All right, uh, CNN politics: mysterious attack on U.S. diplomats in Cuba occurred as recently as last month. Now, this is really weird. It's some kind of sonic, creepy, acoustic weapon, the kind of thing that you would expect to be part of the whole chemtrails, uh, harp, uh, you know, plasma weapon, creepy weirdness. Well, they actually had diplomats, you know, down in Cuba, and they they confirmed it. They're talking about it on mainstream news. Some kind of creepy, weird acoustic sound weapon or something. Uh, it's just gotten so bizarre. FBI, DHS officially classify Antifa activists as domestic terrorists. FBI, DH, DHS have officially identified Antifa activists. Okay, so who are they? Well, those would be your paid agent provocateurs that are hired by, you know, the extreme, as they would have you believe, the extreme left. 
And they would make you think that, you know, it was Kissinger and Soros in a dark, smoky room drinking top shelf scotch going, let's send in the Antifa people. Or Obama sitting there in his mansion that he just purchased right beside Ivanka Trump, uh, walking distance from the world, uh, Washington, D.C.'s largest mosque. Hmm. Speaking of the Twilight Zone, yeah, we haven't seen the last of it. Arkema, Texas, plant explodes. Black smoke fills the air. We're going to see plant explosions, chemical explosions. Listen to this. Workers clear out Russian consulate in San Francisco. There's a big hubbub over this, folks. The United States seized control of three Russian diplomatic posts after confirming the Russians had compiled, or I'm sorry, complied with the Trump administration's order uh, to leave within two days, officials said. And Russia is mad. But, you know... Uh, it just goes on and on. South Korea to strengthen missile capabilities. American bomber stealth fighters conduct flyover in the Korean Peninsula. It's just getting worse and worse. Russian jets conduct eight intercept reconnaissance uh, 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 sorties uh, uh, over uh, you know aircraft on their border. It just keeps on getting worse and worse and worse. Praise God. Keep your eye on Irma. Pray. Praise Jesus. And let's go ahead and bring on Brother Sammy. I hear the drums echoing tonight. She hears only whispers of sound. Brother Sammy, are you there? Yes, I'm here, John. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, we can hear you good. Praise God. Okay, okay, okay. We 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 thank God so much, John, for this opportunity again. Um, I bless the Lord for giving us a platform to be able to share what God is doing through our ministry, Pipes International. God bless you so much. Uh, I want to, first of all, thank God for all the listeners of Tribulation Now, for all your support. You've stood with us all the time. I want to thank you for your prayers. Prayers are the key to open every door. And so I just have to thank you for everybody who prays for us. When we are out there in the mission, we are in your risky places, and to keep us in the Lord, that's always very, very important. I want to thank uh, all the people who financially support our ministry. That helps us to continue advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ and feeding hundreds of kids, as you see on our website, in different countries, um, and especially the Democratic Republic of Congo, where we have 700 kids and uh, very, very difficult conditions. So I want to thank you. And thirdly, I want to thank all the people who have opened uh, doors for us, either like John the Baptist to talk in the radio and uh, get audience listening to us. And I also thank others who invite us to their church or small groups just to talk about what we do, motivate other people to be involved in missions, and even uh, help people know how they can give. John, particularly today, mm-hmm. I just wanted to uh, come and give an update on the land that we uh, purpose to buy in Kigali, Rwanda, and this is a place where God led us to start um, a, a, a center where pastors and Christians from all different places will assemble and get a short training on missions and be provided with the resources like audio Bibles to help them share the gospel, especially in very remote places where people either can't read uh, for themselves or they don't have Bibles in their languages. So what we are going to provide for them is audio Bibles in different languages and train them how to use those gadgets. And they can go in the evening as they tell their stories. They can listen to the word of the Lord and they'll be given an opportunity at the end of listening every chapter to give their lives to Jesus for discussion, to ask questions. A very, very wonderful opportunity. And we are looking forward to this. We feel uh, that God is leading us to start you know, different movements in all the places we go where people uh, get and take greater responsibility to reach local communities with the gospel of Jesus. And um, I want to thank the listeners because a few weeks ago, maybe like three weeks actually, I spoke on the radio and told John the desire that God has put in us to buy land in uh, Kigali, Rwanda, buy a piece of land where we can eventually build a place where people will come for these trainings. And John, people started making donations. And uh, 
And uh, on Thursday last week, I gave an update to some of the donors, and I said we need four more thousand. I did an email, and the following day, uh, one person donated the four thousand on Friday morning. So we are all good. Not asking any more money for this land. Thank you so much, John, for facilitating this. And and this person, John, um, whom I'm not going to say their name, but this lady, God spoke to her. She was uh, she actually gave four thousand dollars initially, and then she was asking for uh, as a gift update. She said she's going to pray to hear what God is going to tell her, and eventually, then God said donate four more thousand. So John, one person wow. donated eight thousand and many more gave uh, whatever God helped them, and uh, and and we are so grateful to everybody who gave ten dollars or twenty, a hundred, five hundred. Within a very short time, we were able to raise the 13,000. And um, we are praying with our wow. small board here and trusting God, you know, when it will be time for building this structure, that same God who provided 13,000 in such a short time, you know, even using one person to give 8,000, amazing, you know. <laughs> we say that yeah. God will also provide the money. John, isn't that exciting? Oh, it's just unbelievable! It's it, it, praise God. Let's uh, the, the crowd is cheering. Hallelujah! Amen. <laughs> and by the way, John, this particular donor um, had not donated money before, so this was her oh, first wow. time to donate the first four thousand and the other four thousand. So it's you know, and and uh, as I said the last time, we were asking God, Father, if it's Your will, let us know that it's Your will for us to get this uh, property and you know god just uses something so um so so uh so great you know something that you can doubt i mean if if it touches one person to do that he can do anything uh, and i want to ask you finally so we will be purchasing that the process is already ongoing i'll let you know when uh, that is done and finally i want to ask you to keep praying for us as you know uh in this world we have to bring people to Jesus, as John, you said, about all the things happening and all these uh, floods happening all over the world. I mean, it's so clear that we are living in the last days. And for us who are Christians and who God has called and who God has um, clearly told us what to do, we have to do it. So next month, October, we are heading to Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia. I'll be there with my wife, my son of four years. He'll be there also. He's a small missionary. And then um, a, a, a friend of ours is going to join us. We are waiting for two more confirmations. So we have four people already going to three countries in Asia from October 5th to 25th. Please pray for us. If God directs you whichever way you want to participate. We want to thank you so much. And uh, your prayers are needed. Uh, moving from one country to another, taking flights protection in some of these countries. Indonesia, I think, in, is in about 90% Muslim. You know how what happens in all these Muslim countries, attacks and everything. God is protecting us. We trust him to protect us this time around again. And your prayers, as I said, are always appreciated and highly appreciated. But for today, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who donated towards the land buying. God bless you so much. This weekend we'll be praying for partners, and I want to ask you if you have any item that you need us to pray for, because the month of September we commit it. We always pray for our donors and partners, but the month of October is what we put aside for that. So if you have any issue, you'd like us to pray with you. A few people have emailed me. Please feel free. We keep it confidential. You can email John or myself. We'll keep you in prayer. And if you go to our website, I have put a few new videos, two of them actually, very interesting. One of them is the choir of the pygmies that we preach to in Congo. They said before, when I first went to the pygmies in 2004, they didn't know who God is. They prayed to a God in the forest. They called him Tore, T-R-T-O-R-E. But now we have a choir, a wonderful choir. They get invited to meetings, and everybody comes to see the pygmy choir. So in this small video I just put up for maybe like one minute or so, I, am, I joined them on the platform to, to sing in Idri. So many people came to see them. I preached the word of God, and in that very particular meeting, 50 people gave their life to Jesus. Isn't it wonderful what God is doing? You know, he is using those forest people. They didn't know Jesus. 
using them to attract people to come and see them. And then we take that opportunity, we share the gospel of Jesus, and hundreds of people have come to the Lord through that. So thank you so much. And I put another small video where we are in um, Ijwi Island. Um, I mean, we are in Lake Kivu from Goma heading to the island. And the reason I did this is that so people can see, you know, the work you support is real. Uh, God is doing great things. We are not going to comfortable places. In the island of Ijwi, there is no guest house, there is no restaurant, there is no hotel, nothing. So we, we have to go to somebody's house. Sometimes we have big teams, they ask us to pay some little money, and uh, we stay there with the people. You know, we are where the people are. We don't have any luxury out there, but the Lord is good. And I want to thank you so much. If you go to Pipes International, like Pipes um, of Water, as John say, puts it, pipesinternational.org, you'll see those videos, and you'll see what God is doing. You'll see amazing pictures, and I just want to thank you. We are now getting to another level. God is helping us. We'll be gathering people from Burundi, from Congo, from Cameroon, from Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda. In this one place, uh, they'll be taking buses. It's all central. And then we teach them. We give them resources. They go back to their villages. What we are doing is going to be multiplied 100 times. The movement will continue to, uh, to spread, and the gospel of Jesus will reach every corner of the world. So thank you. Your money takes the gospel there. You may not be able to go, John, but you are already there because your uh, finances is doing it. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Awesome. God bless you, Brother Sammy. That's so exciting. And, folks, again, it's Pipes, P-I-P-E-S, International, just like, you know, water pipes in the house, P-I-P-E-S, International.org. It's awesome. Also, for those of you who sometimes go to Tribulation Now, tribulation now.org uh, to uh, contribute. I fixed the button finally. Uh, you can if yes, you hit the donate yes. button. <laughs> Because, yeah, now it works with the mobile devices. Did you notice, Sammy? <laughs> oh, I did. I, I uh, check that. That's wonderful. Yeah, I got it working finally. I, you know, um, what, what do you know? You mentioned it, and I went and looked, and I was like, hey, look, there's a new button there. I can try it. And it worked. I was like, yay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. So praise Jesus. Great opportunity to be able to give into the kingdom and work bringing people to Jesus. And you know what? PayPal makes it possible to get the money right into the hands of the people who need it the most, the people who are poor, hungry, and have no place to turn to but our love of Christ through Sammy's work. God bless you, Brother Sammy. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Amen. All right, praise God. And let's see. Where I, I had an anonymous call, which would have been a Skype call, my guess would be, from Guriel. Guriel, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And, um, and then it dropped. So now he's calling in of all cool places for him to be calling in from. He'll be calling in from Vanuatu. Is that like cool or what? You know, Vanuatu is like the earthquake capital of the world. And uh, it's got this this really cool place in the um, in the Ar- Archipelago Island cluster uh, called uh, Espiritu Santo, which means Holy Spirit Island. Uh, and I just love that. Um, but anyway, um, I'm watching the call doc because I had an anonymous call in the queue, which I suspect would have been uh, Brother Ali, uh, but I uh, don't see it in the queue anymore. So he may have gotten disconnected. And anyway, what I'm going to do is while I'm waiting for him to call back in, I'm going to go ahead and share with you. I don't know. I kind of feel bad because, I, you know, maybe I'm, we can always listen to it more than once. But I'm going to play for you the song that Brother Ali, while we're waiting for him to call back in, uh, that he um, uh, wrote, which is just amazing. It's called Look Up. So let's just go ahead and play that right now while we're waiting for him to call back into the program. Here we go. Look up, look up, yeah. I 
the end of days What the Bible says about the day of the Lord I the whole world shake with the big earthquake when he returns Could be a nuclear war, what the prophets saw Till you wonder where your help come from Look up, look up, your redemption draw near Come the man of peace, come the mark of the beast The tribulation don't you be surprised when the Antichrist give us deception. And you see nation rise against nation, abomination of the desolation. Look up, look up your redemption journey, where he draws me. He will wipe away your tears, when he draws me. Awesome. Praise God. And we have Brother Guriel Ali on the line. Let's go ahead and blow the show far and bring him live. Hallelujah. Brother Ali, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear can you, you great. Hear are, are you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Are you calling in right. from Vanuatu? That's where I am in Vanuatu, the earthquake capital of the world. And uh, right, I was just telling the listeners, uh, uh, I love that place because of uh, the uh, the uh, the island Espiritu Santo, Holy Spirit. I, I love that. That is just too cool. Isn't that too cool? So, uh, of course, I don't live here. I, I live in Australia in, in about an hour's drive from Melbourne, south of Melbourne. No, that's awesome. Uh, and you're doing ministry work there, right? That's right. Uh, we have a, a wonderful brother, um, super evangelist, crusader. His name is Tim Hall, and we're doing some crusades here and some concerts. And uh, last year when we did this, we had like 15,000 people come to our at the event. So uh, that's why we're here wow. again, and hopefully we will see the Lord move again in a great way. Oh, uh, that is just too cool. <laughs> I love that. I was just, ju- I was just kind of quipping with my, uh, with, with the co-host of the radio show, um, uh, brother Jose about, uh, I was like, yeah, he just called me with Skype over the, over the phone from Vanuatu. I'm like, this is better than ham radio. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta Isn't love it. Well, yeah, absolutely. 
Well, it's thank you for playing my song, and um, it's only it's only a new song, and, and I've been doing this a long time. I didn't think I had any songs left in me, but there you are. This is a, this has turned out to be a good one. Oh, it's awesome. It's called Look Up, folks. And uh, again, this is, uh, I'll spell you, uh, for those of you who are listening on a podcast app and you you don't see the title of the show, um, his his name is spelled G-U-R-E-Y-L, G-U-R-E-Y-L, and then his not last qu- name is Ali, A-L-I. There, it, it's not it's quite not, right. It's, uh, it's only, only uh, the right letters, but in the wrong order. So it's G-U-R-Y-L. E L. Oh man, G-U-R- I'm gonna to have to correct that. But we got oh. that's okay. That's G U R Y E L. So the Y is pronounced like an I, and it's and it, so you say it, Guriel. Okay, awesome. And the name of the song is "Look Up," and you just heard that, and it is it's excellent. It's excellent. Praise God. That was anointed. The Lord just moved on you when 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 the when the, when the music was flowing on me. Oh man, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, brother, um, the way that we typically work with this program. And again, it doesn't have to be this way, but um, to allow the guest to share as much as the Lord, you know, places upon their heart, um, I I will typically just kind of, you know, like treat it like a church and, you know, there's a podium and you take the mic and go ahead and share with the listeners your testimony, you know, what happened, what, you know, what happened when you were in London, you know, uh, you're, you know, you were raised there, you went to, you know, tell us, tell us your testimony and, and how, you know, the divine providence of our father would have brought you to the place that you are today. Uh, if you would, and share that with the audience. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and step back into the background. I'm not going anywhere. I'll just mute my mic, but I'd like, like to just sure. go ahead and allow you to share with everybody how you, you know, what happened in your life. So, John, just before we go on, so we are actually live now. I'm speaking to your audience now. Yeah, we're, we, we, we run live, and then it goes directly in the podcast immediately after the show. So it goes recorded Fantastic. podcast, and then later recorded to YouTube after that. Fantastic. Well, hello to all of you who are listening from around the world, and what a pleasure it is to speak to you, and I, I really do feel honoured, John, that you took the time to contact me. Thank you so much. Um, Our blessing. Okay, so let me let me start then. Um, so uh, my surname is Ali, A L I, uh, just like uh, the fighter Muhammad. Remember Muhammad Ali, John? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, are, we, are we allowed to chat, or you just want me to take over? Um, uh, well, I, I'll keep my mic live and, 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 you know, if you want to go back and forth, absolutely. Uh, however, the Lord, leads, I, I like I'm, I'm totally, I, I, I like it. I like it that way. It's, it's a bit more fun and cool. spontaneous. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm here. Um, so, well, so Ali is my surname. Uh, and so obviously you can tell by my name, um, that I come from a Muslim family and, uh, my folks are from from Cyprus, which uh, which has Greeks and Turks, and obviously the, the Turkish population is, is Islamic. But um, I I was born in London. I don't want to confuse you, but I was born in London. But we moved to Australia when I was seven years old, and Mum and Dad had a bit of trouble, you know, as couples do. Uh, there were four children. I was, I was the youngest. And, um, and it wasn't long before they separated and ended up divorced. And, and I was only 10 years old. So 10 years old. Uh, it was pretty tough losing your dad, you know, in a new country with, with, a, with a strange sounding name. And, you know, no other people around me. Uh, there were lots of Smiths and there were lots of Joneses, but there was no, no other Ali. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I had to try and assimilate and find acceptance as quick as I could. And so, you know, as I grew older, mum had four, four kids, by, you know, raising them by herself and, she did an unbelievable job. You know, mums are the real heroes of the world, you know. And uh, so here I was, um, 
just a kid. Yeah. And I, it wasn't long before I, trying to find that acceptance, I, I headed off into the wrong crowd. And I got into um, a surf culture. Uh, I don't know what the surf culture is like there, John, but uh, back in the 70s, it was it was pretty wild. And, you know, we got into drugs and, and the rest of it, you know. Uh, and, and it wasn't long before... I was a 17-year-old boy completely lost. Um, so I, I don't know if surf culture was like that over there. I don't, was it similar? What what kind of culture? I'm not sure I'm picking up on the, the word the that you're surf, using. Some... Yeah, the, the surfing culture, you know. Um, oh, surfing? Wipe out, you know. Uh, yeah, the surf culture. No... Surfing culture. Yeah. The surfing culture in uh, America is um, something that you would run into in California. Uh, now, yeah. I know there are people that on the East Coast, but I have a sneaking suspicion most of them are transplants from California. <laughs> <That's up there. laughs> but, uh, you know what I mean? But anyway, yeah. Um, uh, but. Uh, yeah. So, but you know, you're absolutely right. That that's a way of life. Uh, you know, when I was out living out in San Diego, uh, there there were places that I used to hang out. Uh, this is back yeah. when I was living in sin, a lot of sin. I was very backslidden back then, and uh, yeah. and there were people, there were homes that were near the beach. Um, and people who lived on the beach, and and that was their way of life. They literally chose to live yeah. on the beach. So it was a fairly similar culture he- here. And we're talking the 70s, so I'm 57 now, you know. And so I, I know I sound yeah. much younger than that. <laughs> but so I, I was pretty lost, you know. And mum could see this. You know, it distressed her to see this. Um, and she suggested that I sell my car and and jump on a plane and, and fly back to Cyprus and mm. London where my family were, you know, my extended family, because we were the only unit in Australia, family unit. All of mum's and dad's brothers and sisters were in Cyprus and in England. So... I did that. I thought, look, I do need a change. I, I need to. I need to break this, you know. And so, uh, at the age of twenty, I flew over to Cyprus and uh, just landed there with my guitar. And um, I, I couldn't speak Turkish because I grew up in Australia. And so, I, you know, all of my cousins and and uncles and aunties, mm-hmm. you know, they couldn't speak English. So, you know, there was a huge communication gap. You know. Um once again, I was lonely and in a, in a strange place. Um, but we used to have these uh, picnics and we would go out and, and, you know, fire up the coal barbecues and cook, and, you know, kebabs and stuff, you know, and which was great. Uh, one of, on one of these occasions, I went for a walk and I was just... I, I, to be honest, I, I've got to I've got to say that I was praying. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't have said that at the time, but I was looking at my life. I was thinking about my family. I was thinking about you know the sin that I was involved in because I knew it was sin. You know, I knew it was wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I I took a rest under a tree and I I had the most amazing experience. Now I don't know if it, I fell into a dream had a little snooze or whether it was a vision. It, I would say a dream forward slash vision. And um, if I if I could, John, I'd like to share that vision with you. Yeah, please. All right. So uh, just like in dream, in, in normal dreams, you kind of, when, when you dream, you, you kind of know what's going on, even though a lot of the scenes are, are pretty bizarre. Um, so now, Please stop me, John, if you if my accent throws you at any time and, and ask me what I'm actually saying, okay? Oh, sure. But you sound perfect. I mean, I, I can completely understand everything you're saying. Fantastic. Some, so I have spoken with American audience before, and sometimes they don't understand my accent, so I will try and slow down. But anyway, here's the vision. So I saw this very wide river, something like uh, the Mississippi, you know, 
uh, uh, I'm remembering those old Huck Finn movies, you know. And yeah. uh, on the on the far bank there was a, a, a big rock, and and uh, and the water was flowing from my left to sorry from my right to my left, and it was flowing. And I looked downstream, and the water was flowing over some waterfalls, much like the Niagara Falls. And then I looked to my right upstream, and as far as I could see, the water was made of water. It was made of people. And the people were coming from my right, traveling across me, and then down to my left, and they were all falling over the waterfall. And I knew that this was the people of the world, and all of them were heading to their destruction. They were heading to their death. And it was a wow. river of death. So I looked to the far bank and where that rock was on the far bank, it was probably the size of maybe a two or three story home. And on the rock, there was a man standing and he was wearing a, ro- a white robe, a white robe. And uh, coming out of the rock, there was another little river that flowed into the big river. And that river, that little stream, if you like, um, was not made of water either. It was made of pure light. And as that little stream met the big river of death, it was a very dark, gloomy scene here, right? It was very dark and gloomy, you know, a foreboding kind of vibe about this. But where the, where the river of light that flowed from the rock met the big river the the river of death there was a big glow around the mouth of the stream the mouth of the stream. Uh, and the light was, was making the, the the big river glow and i noticed that everyone that went through that glow was actually sucked up the river of light and and placed on top of the rock where the man in white was so i knew that was what? the way out then what i realized was that I was also in the river of death. And I was walking, I was flowing the way everybody else was to my death and to my destruction. So I knew that I had to get to that rock and really quickly. So I didn't want to go by myself. So I began to tell people around me, I said, look, we've got to get to the, see the light over there, see the river of light that's, that stream, we've got to get over there. See the guy up there? He's saving everybody. We've got to get over there. But they would not listen to me. And the reason they wouldn't listen to me is because they all um, had little horns and a tail. Now, we're talking vision here, right? We're talking mm-hmm. here, we're type. We're talking type car. Type. Right. And mm-hmm. uh, the reason they wouldn't listen to me is because mm-hmm. I had horns and a tail as well. And I instantly knew that this was a mark of our sinfulness. Right. So I was really stressed. I, I was distressed is a better word. And then the vision began to fade. And as it began to fade, the man who was standing in white. Now, I didn't know that that was the Lord Jesus. Looking back, I can tell you now, oh, that was the Lord Jesus. But I didn't know that at the time. And as the vision began to fade, he zoomed in on my vision. And he pointed to me and he said, I'm going to find you. I'm going to save you. And then the dream ended. Wow. So, of course, oh, that's now, awesome. I was... Be- yeah, it's awesome, right, John? Oh, yeah. The- the, the incredible thing here, John, is that, uh, and you probably know this, and many of your listeners would know this, but for those of you who don't, many, many hundreds of thousands of Muslims are now seeing visions of the Lord Jesus who is robed in white. Have you heard about this? Uh, yes, absolutely. I have collected. Um, I have collected uh, several um, articles on that from. 
the Gospel Herald. As a matter of fact, one of the fastest growing religions right now in the country of Iran is uh, Christianity, and it is absolutely it is it is, it is specifically due to visions of Jesus and angels appearing before them and leading them uh, to uh, to Christ. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is something, the reason why I collected them is because, uh, it, we do a Friday night prayer vigil on half for almost, I don't know, it's been a pretty long time. Uh, I think over a year now. And, um, and we've been praying like that, you know, uh, one of the, you know, tactics, there you, are. you know, we use and we've been praying, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, you know, uh, you know, send down your angels into these lands. Uh, there you, know, you to are, come upon them and... John. You're doing exactly the right thing. That's exactly the thing Praise to be God. doing. Well Praise done, God. To you, yeah. honestly. That is, that is exactly what we need to be doing. These people are hungry. You know, they're hungry for God, and you know, they pray five times a day. They are hungry. And they want God, yep. and they believe in dreams and visions. They they hold them in high esteem, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. and when and when something like that happens, they cannot ignore it, as I could not, as a young man. And wow. so we're talking in the early eighties. We're talking the early eighties. So this is you know thirty odd years ago. So um, it wasn't long after that dream that I left Cyprus. That was the land of my ancestors. And I flew to London to see the other part of my family. Now, the interesting thing here is that when my dad left me 10 years before in Australia, he travelled back to London. And he remarried and had new children. By the time I had come and seen him 10 years later, in my early 20s, um, he had remarried, he had, he had a shop, he, he had a dry cleaner's shop, had a new family, new kids, and... I went, and I went to see him, and I, I, I found that I had a lot of resentment toward him because he had made his new family work and he wasn't able to make our family work. So I kind of resented that, um, and I, I was quite angry with him, you know. And um, so he had a dry cleaner shop. All right. Now, next to the dry cleaner shop, there was a little hardware store, you know, like Tim the Tool Man, Taylor. <laughs> yep. It's a little hardware store. And uh, there, was this, um, there was this black guy there, you know, because London, uh, just like uh, the, the state, has a huge black population. And uh, most, of the, uh, most of the black population in, in, in London in those days were from the West Indies, you know, the land of reggae music. Right. Right. And so they, they you know, the, that was their population. We're all West Indies because the West Indies were a colony of England at that time. And so England, a lot of the a lot of the people would head over to England to find work and work themselves out of poverty. Right. You see. You see. So mm-hmm. uh, and I was because of the reg, because of the uh, because of my surfing background, one of the big things in surf music. A lot of the surfers loved the reggae music. They loved Bob Marley. They loved reggae music. And so he was my age, this guy, in the hardware store. He worked there. So here's my father's store, a dry cleaner's store. Next door to that is a dry cleaner's store. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, a hardware store. My, my dad's store was a dry cleaner, sorry. And next door was the, the hardware. And this young bloke worked there. He was my age. His name was James. And we hit it off, you know, because we had the reggae music connection and and I was looking for mates, you know. What what I didn't know is that oh, he was the son of the son of a preacher. Ah. And he could see that my yeah, he could see that my my life was lost and, and you know, I needed it. Um and because I you know, I was still carrying a lot of sin baggage, you know. Um anyway, next door so there were you know, there's a there's a block of shops. You know, so there's my dad's shop, the dry cleaner, and then there's the hardware. And then next to that little store was another little store, which was a secondhand bookstore. So one day James goes to the secondhand bookstore and he picks up a children's Bible, just a little one. And he gives it to me and he says, Guriel, I want you to read this. 
and you know I mocked him a little bit. You know, I I I, I had a bit of, you know, I I I had I I, I joked a little bit, and I said, oh, what are you? Little... What should we do now, James? Should we hold hands and skip to Sunday school? <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. so it was a, it, you know, I was I was pretty rugged, you know. Um, anyway, he said he looked at me very seriously, and James never did look at me seriously unless it was he had something important to say. And he said, Gurriel, just read it. So I was living upstairs at this time. And so I went upstairs. I thought, okay, I will, I will read this. And I began to read this children's Bible. And of course, children's Bible have lots of pictures. And I came across this picture of, of Jesus who was dressed in a white robe. And it was the Sermon on the Mount. And he was sitting on a rock. And wow. it was exact same <laughs> face, not a similar face, wow. the exact same face that appeared to me months earlier, way over in Cyprus in my dream. Wow. And, and, you know, and then I, I, knew, I knew God was doing something. I, I knew God was doing something then. So there was the oh, face yeah. of Jesus on one page. On the opposite page was, a, was the Lord's Prayer. And I read the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. And those words hit me around the head. I'd never read anything like that. Sure, I'd, I'd, I'd heard the Lord's Prayer before growing up in a Western country, but, it, you know, when the, when the Lord is doing something, these words impact you in a new way. And, and I began to think, wow, I can call wow. God Father because Jesus taught us to pray our Father, not my Father, our Father. So... It was Jesus' father, and it was my father. And I thought, wow, how can I call him father? How can I call God father? I thought, wow, wouldn't that be unbelievable? That would be so cool to have God as my father. A father who wouldn't leave me like my real father did. So I'm thinking this in my unborn again mind. And... So I, I was greatly impacted. It wasn't long after that, maybe the next day. I wish I took a journal, but, you know, one day bled into the other and it's all a bit, you know, a bit of a, a mix-up. But I think it might have been a day or two later. I was thinking about God being my father and thinking about the man robed in white being Jesus. I was thinking about all that. I was on a double-decker bus in London, you know, the red double-decker buses. And yep. what I didn't know was that there was a, a, another black guy who was uh, with Operation Mobilization. Have you ever heard of that group? No. Right, they're a missions group, mainly in Europe. And, uh, and they, take, they take young people on a big ship and they sail around the world and drop off these evangelists in each city and they hand out tracts and books and witness for Jesus. And one of these black kids, he was an Ethiopian kid, and he, he was praying. He told me this later. He was praying, Lord, as I step on this bus, please let me sit next to somebody that you're talking to. So this black Ethiopian kid sits next to me. I'm upstairs, right? And I'm, I'm in my own world. I'm looking out the window. I'm looking at the sky. I'm praying in my heart, Lord, how can I make Jesus? How can I meet Jesus? How can I make... How can I make God my father? How can that happen? I was thinking about all of this, and this black kid sits next to me, and his name was Teklu. He was an Ethiopian young man, and he's praying, you know, Lord, let me sit next to somebody that you're talking to. And he reaches into his bag, and he's got a, he's got a book in there, and it, and it was the book called I Dare to Call Him Father, and it's a book about a Muslim, a Muslim woman who got converted and she found God to be her father. On the front cover wow. of that book, it had a picture of, of this Muslim woman with a veil on, uh, not a hijab, her face wasn't covered, just a veil, you know, just a head covering. And uh, mm -hmm. it looked like my mum. And so I looked down wow. at the book and I, I thought, that looks like my mum. And look at the title. I dared to call him father, a Muslim woman gets converted to Christianity. I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. So I say to this guy, this stranger sitting to me, next to me on the bus, 
mate, can I have a look at that book, please? And of course, this is his answer to prayer. He's praying that he's going to sit next to one somebody that the Lord's talking to. Wow. You know, he says, he's going, sure, you can, have, you can look at the book. You can have the book. Here, it's yours. Wow. And uh, we got to talking, and it wasn't long before this precious young man, evangelist, led me in the sinner's prayer, and, and I asked Jesus to be my saviour. That's awesome. On the bus. On the, just after we got off the bus. Oh, that's so cool. On a park bench. We sat on a park bench. And he gave me the book. He said, take this and read it. So I took the book home uh, and uh, some wonderful things began to happen to me. Wonderful, wonderful things began to happen. So, uh, look, I've given you an abbreviated version of that, John, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm just about finished a book that I'll be, I'll be uh, uh, writing. I'm writing a book about this testimony, and so please look out for that. I, I'll be ve- finished very shortly, hopefully by before the end of the year, because it's, it's quite funny. Some of it's very funny. Some of it's very serious, of course. But the Lord has got such a beautiful sense of humour. He knows what it takes to get a soul saved. Completely, completely, and he he knows what it's going to take to get Muslims saved. Completely. What what is the title going to be? Uh, well, that's a good that's a good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've got a couple of titles. I'm not sure if the title title is going to be called "Know Yourself Loved," because uh, there is another another dream that the Lord gave me, uh, which will be in the book. Or, uh, I don't know, it'll probably be something like, you know, a Muslim turns to Christ or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but the, the, the Lord will give me the title. But look out for it. Um, go to my website, gurialali.com, gurialali.com, and, and I'll keep you posted there. That's awesome. And, um, and yes, I, I, I corrected the spelling on the radio show title, G-U-R-Y-L. Ali, A L I, and so I'm going to type that in here. So it's G G U R. There you are. Okay, cool. Yep, and sure enough, it comes right up. Now, um, for those uh, listeners who um, uh, are interested in getting a copy of the song, how do they go about doing that? Do yeah, we well, just go up? to my website. Yeah, go to, go to my website, and we can arrange a download. But it's available on iTunes and, you know, Spotify, all of the online uh, stores. So just go there and just press in Look Up by Guriel Ali and please support the music. That's Can awesome. I, now, John, Praise before God. I go, have we got time? Have, have we got time? I'd, I'd like to talk about the song briefly, if, you, if that's okay. Please. Oh, yeah, please do. You, you you have as much time as you want for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> and that's no pressure. <laughs> I'll probably go for another 20 minutes if that's okay uh, because I sure. have another appointment I have to go to, but um, no uh, maybe 20 or so minutes. So let's see how we go. Um, okay. So now uh, look up is an end times song. Okay. So um, um, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, Pastor Steve Ciccolanti. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's got a huge YouTube following and uh and I've played music for him for many years. For many years. He is a great end times Bible teacher. And he asked me to write an end time song. So, well, I thought, what a challenge that is, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I have a pastoral background and I've been through Bible college. You know, I've been playing music and ministering to the Lord for over 30 years. And, uh, you know, I, I thought I knew about end times. But, you know, the more I began to Study. I wanted to get my vocabulary right, you know, within times. And the more I began to see that, you know, it was a pretty heavy topic. You know, the mark of the beast, the man of peace, you know, you've got tribulation, you know, abomination of the desolation. You know, there's some pretty grim topics there, aren't there, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, you know, I'm thinking, oh, you know, and I thought, oh, my goodness, Lord, you know, This is a heavy topic. So, you know, instantly I decided that the song I was going to write was going to be as happy as I could make it sound. 
And, cool. and in, my, in my Bible study, you know, I, the Lord took me to the book of Luke where Jesus was talking about the end times. And he said, there'll, there'll be earthquakes and there'll be, you know, there'll be this and there'll be, you know, great falling away and all of this stuff, you know. And then he said, but when you see these things happen, look up for your redemption draws near. And as soon as I read that, I knew that was the silver lining in this dark cloud. I knew that was the yeah. ray of hope for us all. And I knew that was going to be the chorus. And I knew that was going to be the title of the song. Look up for your redemption draws near. Redemption draws near. And, which is, uh, and which so is, there you are. I, I made I made it happy, and and I put as many oh, yeah. you know uh, as many end time references as I could. You know, there's a lot in there. <laughs> I love that because that's pretty much what we we've, we've been doing on this program. Yeah, how do you do like a thousand plus radio shows over six years of time? Tribulation now, talking about all this creepy, weird, horrible, end times, you know, scary stuff. Uh, you know, the the truth of the matter is, is as your song captures in the theme, is that for those of us who know what all this scary stuff is about, it, it is a wonderful, awesome, amazing, stupendous, exciting time to be alive. There's going to be some bad stuff that happens, yes, but the net result for those of us who know where we're going is extremely positive, and that gives us the testimony that we need to bring people to, if you will, the light amidst the darkness, and which which Absolutely. echoes really the vision that you were given in, in from that river. That 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 that's it. That's the key. That's the that's the secret. The mystery to understanding is no matter how dark it appears around you, no matter how bleak. And 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 endless and ominous and and death bound that river is that man in the white robe with that light shining is is who we represent and can bring as many of our brothers and sisters from this dark earth along with us to glory. That's awesome. This is a great time to be alive. It really is, and. You know, I wanted to make the song happy. I wanted to ma- make it joyous, you know, because uh, we have a great hope, man. You know, we have a great saviour who's done everything to save us. To- yeah, yeah. A lot more than most of us can even get our arms around. The more we think about, the more, ah, oh, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. And the most amazing thing <laughs> of all is, Who art man that thou art mindful of him, that we can call him Father? Yea, we can call him Abba Father, which is a very personal reference to a father. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, Abba Father, that's that's right, John. Yeah, that's that is a very personal cry. So father is a is, is a is a uh, um, uh, you know a a, a, um, a reference of of respect. Abba father is also a reference of respect, but one but that includes almost like a term of endearment. Yeah, it's an affectionate. Yeah, it's a term yes. of affection. It's not. It's not the. It's not just an authority figure. An authority figure. Right. It's you know because you you know so because we're we, you know we we fear God in a reverent fear and then as we draw closer and closer and closer and it becomes an intimate obedient experience obedient experience that transitions into an awe and a love and a closeness whereby we don't Absolutely. want Absolutely. to go through life without our Father guiding us. That's right and. You know, right. and he's a true father. You know, he's not afraid to discipline you, but he does it with a loving heart. And he he corrects us when we need it. You know, he strengthens us when we're weak. And you know, he's the he's the great father. He's the greatest father, you know. And while I'm on that, John, before we go and, and I leave you and your, your audience, thank you so much for your time. I can't tell you how grateful I am that you've, you've contacted me and, that, that, what, such a wonderful thing for you to do. God, God bless you, John. God. Thank you. But I want to share with you, uh, you know, I, can I just quickly go back to Muslims? You see, now Muslims do not have the sense of a father. This is what's missing, you see. And if we go back to their roots, if we go back to, you know, Abraham, Isaac, 
and Ishmael. Right. Now, of course, you know, the, the Muslims, that's their, that's their genetic line is from Ishmael. And if you think about Ishmael, you know, he's kicked out as, a, as a, just a young boy. There comes a moment where he's actually kicked out of the home with his mum, Hagar, and, and they're pushed out into the desert. And I'm sure uh, at, at the behest and at the request of Sarah, uh, Hagar's master, mistress, and I'm sure this must have broken Abraham's heart to see his son Ishmael go. But, you know, that's what happened. That's what's recorded in Scripture. And here they are, Hagar and Ishmael, out in the desert. Hagar didn't want to see Ishmael, her son, die. So she separates herself from him, the Scripture tells us. This. And then, uh, it, it, isn't it interesting? Have a listen to this. The, the, and this is gonna, all going to be in my book. Ishmael is the word for God who hears. God hears me. Right, and so here is Ishmael out in the desert, and Hagar says the scripture tells us that Hagar didn't want to hear the cry of her son. It was too agonizing for her. But somebody else heard the cry of her son, the God who hears. And the the scripture tells us that the Lord comes down and ministers to them both, and gives them water, and gives Ishmael a promise. Can you believe that? A blessing and a promise. Why? Because he was Abraham's because son. Because he was son. Wow. And so here is Ishmael crying out in the desert. And not only I believe, now I'm, I'm telling you my experience, right? I believe it's not, he, he wasn't just crying out to God. I'm sure in those tears he would have been saying, Dad, Father Abraham, why have you kicked me out? I want to come back home to you, Father I want to go back to my dad. I want my father. And at the, the heart of, of, of the Ishmaelite, at the heart of Islam, is a cry for their father. It's a wow. spirit of crying out for their father. Now, isn't that amazing? It's, it's a spirit of it's rejection. very awesome. It's a spirit, they carry a spirit of rejection. Now, of course, you couldn't tell them that, you know, that would be offensive, but this is the truth. The Lord has shown us this is the truth. And so they're dealing with a spirit of rejection. Now, a generation after that, Esau comes along and he didn't have a spirit of rejection. He had a spirit of vengeance. And so this is the small element of violence that we see in the spirit of Islam. I believe that there are two spirits. Not, I'm not talking demonic spirits. I'm just talking, when I say the spirit of it, I'm talking at the heart of it, right? So I'm not talking a demonic entity, right? I don't want to go there. I'm talking about the, at the heart of this, this religion. There is, the, right. the main heart is, is the spirit of rejection. The second part is a spirit of revenge. And, and this is right. where we see the violence. And this is why so many of them are crying out, it's a religion of peace, it's a religion of peace. Because mostly, and by far and away, the majority are people who are hungry for a father. Is this making sense to you, John? Absolutely. There you are. So, uh, look, I I, I, I just wanted to share that with you. So when we pray for them, pray that they, that, that, you know, they find God the Father. And that their, their cry out for God is, is, is answered by, well, vision streams that the Lord meets them in their way. The Lord met Ishmael out in the desert while he was dying. The Lord met me in Cyprus while I was crying and lonely and alone in a dark place. This is what God does, doesn't he? He finds us. He's the good shepherd. Oh, yeah, amen. Uh, Corey Ten Boom said there is no hole too deep or dark enough that Jesus can't come down and pull you out. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. So there you are. I just wanted to share that with you. You know, these are some of the insights that the Lord has given me. And, you know, I would, it's, it's, I'm so thrilled that you spend time talking about Islam, praying for them the way you ought to be. It's just so refreshing to hear your spirit, John. Good on you. 
Oh, yeah. I, I, one of the things, the listeners of this program know that I am not in the slightest bit shy to rebuke American Christianity and the pride that, it, that, that, bulges out of uh, out of the heart of, you know the lack of heart that that exists in 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 this country it is just absolutely an abomination before god we are all brothers and sisters in christ on a global level all 196 countries and any of this nonsense about uh you know uh this country being more blessed than another or as a people that is that is actually actually the opposite of what the bible says the bible has entire chapters of judgment dedicated to specifically the United States. So I, you know, I'm I'm constantly preaching that that we need to be looking at things not from our country perspective. We need to be looking at things from the bride of Jesus Christ in a global perspective, because we are citizens of heaven, and that is exactly how Jesus looks at every single one of us. Uh, and, and that's how it is, and that's how we should be praying, and that's how we do pray. We pray for all of the countries and all of the people and all of the hearts and, and all of the nationalities, because that is, that's who we are. We, we, we are yeah. not American Christians. We are not, uh, you know, Japanese Christians. We are not, you know, that is not how the kingdom works. Once we become part of the kingdom of God, everything changes, and we are a new people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. That is who we are. We're no longer citizens of our own country. That is just a matter of uh, the happenstance behind where we are at any given time. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. So amen to that. So yeah, there there we are. So our mission now is to is to get out and get the word out. You know. So I'm thankful for stations like yours, who boldly proclaim, you know, God's love. It's you just know. magnificent. So, now uh, uh, I've oh. I've actually spent the last ten years of my life being on radio, as a radio oh, yeah. host, just like yourself. I've only just stepped down from that. Oh wow! Yeah, praise God. Now I, I'm, I'm probably in for the long haul. I mean, the way things are going right now on a global level, um, you know, I, I, I don't know how. how I don't know what you know. I just don't know what you know and how aware you are. But I suspect by the by virtue of the the lyrics of your song, you are very aware that we are pretty much there. As a matter of fact, right now we're watching the things that are happening on a global level. And when we do yeah, this radio show, we it, it's right now. It's real. It's real. It's empirical. You can look at the news. We're on the edge of World War Three, and uh, that World War Three will include, you know, Psalms eighty-three, Gog and Magog, Isaiah seventeen. All of those prophecies will become fulfilled. Uh, World War Three is in Revelation chapter six, and that is uh, all coming down in one big fell swoop. They're not individual wars. They're not going. That's that's the problem with a lot of the 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 uh, eschatological teachings out there in the Bible. You know, are the uh, books that are out there on the bookshelf. They're not correct. It all happens at once. One big war and it and it comes down like a ton of logs on on mankind and um and it's 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 on it's on our doorstep well look at the news <laughs> How can you miss it, right? But what's so sad is that and this is something we talk about on this program, but what's so sad is that um and I come from this background is that there are sacred cow belief systems embedded into churchianity that say things like, well, the Ezekiel's temple of, of Ezekiel 30, 30, uh, 40, 41, 42, that's got to be built. Uh, it's got to be built where the Al-Aqsa Mosque is. It, you know, all these things have got to happen before, uh, you know, the Gog and Magog invasion, before the World War III, all this. And, and that is not true. It, it's a misinterpretation of the understanding of the Bible. And people are sitting around going, oh, well, none of this can happen because there isn't a sacrifice uh, occurring on the Temple Mount right now. And they haven't built the third Solomon's Temple. So Jesus can't come. The rapture can't occur. None of these things can happen. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We should not be telling God 
what we think. We need to let God be God and worship him and watch the just like your song says and look up because our redemption not only draws nigh, it's on our doorstep. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's right. Excuse me, I'm having a little bit of lunch while I'm talking to you. Oh, that's right. It's uh, my goodness. Let's see. It's uh, you're in. So if you're Brisbane is twelve twenty seven, and you're in Vanuatu, so it's a, it's one twenty seven p.m. your time, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's good. I'm good now. I've just finished a nice sandwich. Anyway, John, it's been marvelous talking to you. <laughs> you. Awesome. And, uh, God bless you and 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 your ministry. Um, I, I'd love to stay in touch with you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh you know, you've got my email and and I I I uh uh I answer and track it like a hawk. So no matter where I am or where I'm working or where, you know, wherever I'm flying or whatever on my day job, I'm watching those emails. So by all means, stay in touch and God bless you, brother. It was awesome. And would you would you close tonight uh with a prayer for us? Sure. I'd love I'd love to. And Praise uh, God. So uh, so let's let's do that. Now, if you're driving, do, do people drive and listen to this, or mainly on their computers, John? It's, it's we we have a global listenership. I get emails from people in different countries in Africa, Bosnia, Herzegovina, South America. It's it's and a lot over in Oceania. So uh, and even in wow. uh, uh, Indonesia. So yeah, people are doing just about anything you can imagine listening to the program. <laughs> now, if you're driving, you know, we, we would just, we would you just know, encourage you not to close your eyes and bow your head at this time. Uh, and, <laughs> but if you're, if you're Carla, not driving, you can close your well, eyes no, and bow it, your head, and, and we'll amen. pray. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for um, your fatherhood, and thank you that we have this spirit of adoption, Lord. We grafted into your family we, through the wonderful, wonderful work of the cross. We thank you for Jesus, your son. We thank you for the spirit that dwells within us, Lord. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one, we worship you. We honor you. Thank you for our brotherhood, Lord, that we share me talking from Vanuatu, talking to my brother John and to all of our friends who are listening. We, we bless you, Father. We honour you. Lord, we pray as these end times are wrapped up that we would do all that we can and all that you've asked us to do. Help us to see what work lays before us. Help us to see it clearly. Help us not to be distracted. Strengthen us. Empower us. Provide for us in this work, your work. We pray for the Muslim world. world. We pray, Father, that they would come across, Lord, uh, Christian, Lord, signposts, all kinds of things. Work your way, Lord, your miraculous, mysterious way. Work your work within each soul that they might find Christ as Saviour and you as Father, we pray. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Brother Guriel Ali. Again, the website is G U R Y E L A L I dot com. And the song uh, that he has shared with us tonight, which is so powerful, is Look Up. Uh, and you can get it there. How awesome. And I'm looking forward to the book coming out, too, brother. So, um, yes, by all means, do stay in touch. And uh, maybe we can bring you back on to introduce the book when you get it completed. I'd love that. I'd, I'd really love that. And uh, uh, now I don't know if you if you've got if you had plans to play that other song, but if you if you do, just just give me a hoy and I'll go out with it. It's up to you. Oh, um, uh, uh, my bad. I I I I don't I don't have that one. No, I don't no, have that one bad. loaded you're on the board. Oh, not at all. Yeah, not at yeah. All. But feel free to feel free to use that one too if you like. Okay. 
All right, that's awesome. Thank you so much. God bless you, brother. Um, and uh, and 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 we'll you know check in with me when you get the book completed or getting close to it, and we'll we'll schedule a show to have you on uh, to share that with everybody so that we can um, because because I I for one would love to read that. Praise Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us from Vanuatu, uh, Ali. Jesus, thank you so much. God bless you. And God bless you, John, and the work that you're doing. Uh, maybe I sh- should have included that in my prayer, but I pray that you get all the provision that you need you know, to do this work. God bless your work. God bless you too, brother. All right, and we'll see you this Wednesday night, Lord willing. God bless you all.